I feel like we need to have this conversation because I still feel like we don't have a definitive answer. Yeah, we don't. Who's in charge? The Bulls or the Bears? The momentum has been on the Bulls' side. You felt a little bit better about your own case yeah. and about where you thought this market was going. And here we are. And the truth be told, Scott, I don't feel that good right now. Now, I'm not, and let me be clear for everyone, I'm not changing my stance. I think 2024 is going to be fine. But on the margins, the last week has made me more negative. Now, let me put this into context. I that know matters. why, but go ahead. Yep, yep, and I'll get right there. But let me put it into context of the broadening or the narrowing of the rally. You go back three Fridays ago, three weeks ago, we got that uh, labor market report. We debated whether it was Goldilocks or not. But what happened after that, equal weight S&P 500 rallied relative to the S&P 500. Small caps rallied versus the S&P 500. That went on until last Wednesday when the Fed spoke and they said two more rate hikes. Now, granted, that's only one more than the market had expected, but they're doubling down. You know, the, the Powell testimony, various other governors are that's saying, right. hey, we're doing two. Bowman, Waller overnight was was hawkish and as, as well. This is the sort of the one thing that you've said can upset your own thesis on the market is a more hawkish Fed, a more aggressive Fed than you think they should be and would be. But they're, they're certainly talking like they will be. They're not backing down. They're not backing down. And it doesn't matter whether I think they should or should not. It doesn't matter right. whether I think inflation should justify them stopping. It doesn't matter. They're being consistent. And I've got to respect it. Um, now, I also am going to respect the fact that the market's up, whatever it is, about 22 percent off the October highs. I am taking October a, lows. October, October lows. Yeah, get that right. I am taking a little bit of money out of the market. But I want to make this clear. And I know you're very good at, Scott, at making sure I don't speak out of both sides of my mouth. I am positive on the medium and long term. OK, so I see 2024 resuming good profit growth. And I think the market's going to focus on that. But I think there's a danger that as the Fed continues to raise rates, in particular, the regional bank system is going to have a little bit of a problem here. It's going to have a little bit of problem with deposit costs. I'm taking off that regional bank uh, index trade. Didn't work out so great. It was down about 9% from when I put it on. But I've just got to get out of the way of the Fed right now. All right. So, Josh, um, momentum, I think you would agree, has, has been on the side of the bulls of late. You said as much in our conversation yesterday on closing bell. But I guess my question at this point would be, can the Bulls really be in charge with, as Jim says, a more hawkish Fed, whether it's Powell, Bowman, Waller, or whoever, with valuations at 19 times, which some say are too stretched in this environment, and with an economy that's weakening, claims up, consumer, uh, you know, I don't know, some say it's going to be tapped out soon. Look at what the 210 spread is doing. Can the Bulls truly be in charge in that backdrop? Well, first, you have to decide whether or not the economy is weakening or normalizing. And if you're in the normalizing camp, then you recognize most of what we've been through in the last three years is just completely aberrant, way off the charts in so many respects. And so to the degree in which we view um, an economic slowdown is really just going back to trend growth and uh, you know, kind of like lapping some of the, the wildness of the 2021, well, is that what 2022 you think? period. Is that what you think? Because there are those who well, suggest we're, we're going to have below trend growth, including the Fed chair himself. I mean, you, cer you certainly could have a period of below trend growth. Yeah. But you can have that and it not tip all the way over into something worse. I mean, it's, it's happened before historically. So we had, look, we had... Uh, th this question of, like, can the bulls remain con in control with the Fed staying hawkish? Well, what do you call the last eight months? Well, I, I, you know, we're, we're living through that now. That That is literally what's been going on. So it, things could change. I, I'm only talking about what's currently occurring. I'm not saying there aren't other possibilities out there. So if you focus on what's occurring right now, the S&P is not cheap, given the rate at which uh, rates have gone up and what we still think they could do from here. And that's why I think the big story this summer is the rotation and the catch-up trade. And Jim referenced the equal weight. Uh, I want to talk about small caps for a moment. The Russell 2000 advanced decline line is now at its highest level since April. Um, the S&P 500 advanced decline line is still one standard deviation above its mean. 
Last week it was two standard deviations of the mean, which maybe is too hot. You've got a lot of stocks working beyond just the mega cap, you know, seven, the, the magnificent seven or the mega cap 50. To me, the, the, the price action is more important than the opinion action. So that's what people are actually doing. 12% of the Russell 2000 stocks are now above their 50-day moving average. The rally is very early, um, but that's the highest since right before the Silicon Valley Bank episode.